The bad boys from Boston were known for their excessive lifestyle of booze, girls, and drugs. And while Aerosmith had already put past the hedonistic life they once lived, their legendary stories still have that charm worth telling to anyone who wishes to know. The year was 1978. It was October 3rd, and you were in Fort Wayne, Indiana at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. On this night, you were here to see Aerosmith on the live bootleg tour. Back then, Aerosmith concerts were one of the premier rock and roll experiences, combining so much of what the whole scene was back then, which was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. The fans at the show packed the arena for what would be an amazing concert. Of course, local law enforcement back then always seemed to use events like this to give them the opportunity to to demonstrate a show of force to the youth at the time. They came into the concert and arrested a bunch of concert goers, mostly kids for smoking weed and underage drinking. It is said that the band's touring seamstress was arrested for lighting up on stage. You combine that with the band's fans getting arrested during the show, and and that was enough for Steve and Tyler to stop the show and call out the police for what they were doing. The police were having none of that and threatened Steve and Tyler with arrest for inciting a riot. When everything was said and done, quite a number of Aerosmith fans had spent the night in jail with an uncertain future ahead of them. Peter Minch, an accountant for the Boston-based group, said he paid out a lot of money for bail and that he would appear in court to help pay the fines of those arrested. After something like that, I'm sure those fans are fans for life. In fact, I heard in 2011... The Indiana DJ actually had a reunion for those people who could show that they were arrested at that concert. 